uh apparently valve has a monopoly over pc gaming have you heard this one i've seen so many kids and intellectual kids repeat this meme valve's got a monopoly over pc gaming or why is valve allowed to have a monopoly over pc gaming is it true i mean do they really well let's explore what is a monopoly anyway mr chuck e cheese meister or whatever this guy's name is that's the first thing that comes to mind when i think monopoly I don't think that's really the answer. Uh, you could superimpose a monocle on Gabe Newell's face, but uh, let, let's look it up. What the heck is a monopoly? Google says, quote, the exclusive possession or control of the supplier of or trade in a commodity or service. So what does that mean? Exclusive possession or control would, at least to me, mean that in order for one to have a monopoly, one would have to control every aspect of some supplier trade of a commodity or service. So let's translate that into PC gaming terms. Exclusive control over the sale and or the distribution of PC games. What if we said Xbox games instead of PC games? Well, Microsoft does have exclusive control over the sale and the distribution of Xbox games. And the same is true for PlayStation and Nintendo. In most instances, these companies also have exclusive control over the software that's even able to be run on your console, unless you've hacked your Switch or you have like paid Microsoft a developer fee. But even then, they have a backdoor and can disable your apps, uh, whatever app you're running, if they don't like it. So are these companies monopolies over their hardware? I would argue that they are. They most certainly are. But can the same logic be held true against Steam and PC gaming? Well, Valve certainly does control the sale and distribution of games on Steam, but that's not really what we're talking about here. There is a clear differentiator between the PC and Steam. The PC is your hardware. You control it. You run whatever software you want on it. And Steam is just one of many different places you can buy games for your PC on. A quick and non-exhaustive list of the other places you can buy PC games from well, I mean, just off the top of my head, there's GOG, there's Epic Game Store, uh, Humble, there's Itch, there's Amazon, there's also the Microsoft Store, which is gross, and there's other first-party junk from publishers like uh, Ubisoft Connect, the EA app, Rockstar Games Launcher, Battle.net, the list goes on and on. So, no, the term monopoly is incorrect here to Valve and Steam anyway. I mean, they don't have anything even approximating a monopoly when it comes to the sale of PC games, especially when you compare the way uh, console platform holders control real, actual monopolies over their system. But why are people saying that Valve holds a PC gaming monopoly if it doesn't fit the criteria? Well, let's get to the bottom of this. Well, first, when you search uh, Steam PC Monopoly, you get a couple of Monopoly Hasbro titles for sale on Steam. So when you refine your caveman search into something a little bit more targeted, you start to hit pay dirt. We find that people have been asking this question since at least 2010. And back then, PC gaming was kind of dead. I mean, it was in this weird limbo state of like almost a zombie. And the most serious competition for Steam was Games for Windows Live. Do you remember that charade, that scheme, that shell game? Yeah, Games for Windows Live sucked, like real bad. It was a misanthropic attempt at Xboxifying the PC, and it was frankly shit. When Microsoft announced the death of Games for Windows Live, so many gamers danced on its grave. And remember that, because that's going to be important. When you find an article from this decade, you start to see something. Judge approves Wolfire's antitrust lawsuit against Valve over Steam, quote, monopoly. And those single quotes there are doing a ton of heavy lifting. The first line says the lawsuit filed last year claims that 75% of all PC games are sold through Valve's Steam store. Now, from my perspective, 75% isn't exclusive possession or control. That's off by about 25%. But perhaps 75% market share is enough to actually exert undue control over the entire sector, thereby constituting like a soft monopoly. Perhaps. Maybe. I don't know. Let's continue reading. The suit argues that the company's 30% revenue cut is only made possible through suppressing competition in the market in order to maintain a monopoly. So what do they mean by that? 
Well, Valve in their contract with game studios and publishers have a most favored nations clause or an MFN clause. This is a standard type of clause in a contract between a buyer and a seller that states sellers won't sell their game to other buyers for a lower price or on better terms. In effect, what this means is that Valve's contracts with studios and game developers have contractually prohibited them from selling their games on other platforms at a lower price than Steam. If a game is sold on Steam for $15 each, then the game developer can't sell that game on Epic's game store for less than $15. Now, why would a game developer want to sell a game for less on Epic game store? Well, they would make more money even if they sold it for less because Epic game store only charges 12% versus Valve's 30% cut. Now, Wolffire Games is suing Valve over this since they say that the use of an MFN clause coupled with Steam's 75% market share means that Valve has unfair control over the price of games. But do they though? I mean, the need for skepticism, especially when it comes to MFN clauses in contracts is real. Uh, Amazon uses MFN contracts all the time to abuse vendors and customers alike. There are so many instances of MFN clauses facing antitrust action, especially as a company's dominance over a market vertical approaches one. Now, I fully believe that most favored nations clauses need to be scrutinized by regulators, and ultimately it will be up to Wolfire Games to prove their case in court. But the argument that Valve's retailer fees are too high, let's take a look at that in particular. Every sale on Steam is subject to a 30% fee, meaning that if you sell a game for $10 on Steam, then you pay Valve $3 and the dev gets the remaining seven. You might be surprised to know that Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and many other online retailers either have charged or continue to charge comparable amounts. And while 30% might sound like a huge proportion of every sale, it's honestly not that much. I've worked in retail before. I know how retailers rip off customers. I've seen 500% markups before. So a 30% cut is fair when developers get to set the price, especially when the profits go right back into the retailer's customer experience. So let's use the big three console experiences as a comparison, as a benchmark, if you will. These companies have used their 30% retailer cut to do what exactly? Historically, they've invested their money into uh, increasing executive compensation while allowing workers' wages to stagnate, performing stock buybacks from shareholders, paywalling their online services for end users, allowing those paid online features to rot and decay in place, barely shipping new software features over the lifetime of the hardware, introducing limited backwards compatibility, if any at all, and continuing to introduce further fees and paid features. Now, granted, since uh, Wolfire and Epic have been raising a stink about Valve's cut, Microsoft has lowered their cut from 30 to 15 percent. And it's been done in what I consider to be a ploy for them to save face and for them to have the moral high ground to call on Valve to lower their revenue share. But the problem is, this is all part of inshittification. This is all about market consolidation, putting the hurt on private companies. This is about publicly traded companies with zero ethics attacking their competition in the court of public opinion. So we need to talk about what Valve has actually done with their 30% cut. They have built an ecosystem of services and infrastructure. They have kept their services and online features free to end users. They have continuously shipped new features and updates for Steam. They have heavily contributed to and invested in free and open source software. They have shipped the sole viable handheld PC experience on the market with a custom OS that maintains the open and private spirit of the PC. They continue to pay their employees comfortable salaries, and they haven't had a major layoff in over a decade. So the question is, what has Epic done with their 12% revenue share? They've spent millions of dollars attracting game developers to their storefront that didn't even have a shopping cart until 2021. They spent millions of dollars to attract gamers to their platform using timed exclusives and other anti-consumer practices. They've given Tencent a direct channel into millions of PCs across the globe. And they laid off over 900 staffers just last week. And finally, they've furnished a rug upon which game devs can grow accustomed to standing on. 
Look, as a fledgling game developer myself, the fact is I would rather pay Valve a fair 30% fee on every sale and continue Steam's imaginary PC gaming monopoly versus paying Epic a 12% cut to help them achieve the real monopoly Tim Sweeney very clearly wants. All of this could change though. I mean, all of the goodwill that Valve has accrued, it really doesn't mean shit to me. Especially if Valve did any number of underhanded things that they are absolutely in a position to be able to do. Valve has built an image and a reputation among gamers, a fairly good one at that, one that only a privately held corporation can do in my opinion. If they went public, if they were acquired by another company, if they started rolling out features that deliberately worsened the customer experience in any way, if they rolled out one of these anti-consumer Game Pass-like subscriptions, I would change my tune pretty quickly. I've been very critical of Valve in the past. Steam Greenlight was a great example. The kind of trash and shovelware that they still allow on the Steam storefront, the kind of algorithmic curation and the recommendation engine that they use, I take particular interest with this kind of stuff. And the fact that new releases from them are almost non-existent to this day, yeah, that's a whole other can of worms. But my point is, I'm not a fanboy blinded by cultish fervor. Valve has real issues. Could they continue on and survive without the most favored nations clause in their contract with partners? I think that they could. Should they get rid of it? I think that's up to them and their lawyers and regulators. In my view, this isn't really a debate for the court of public opinion. Could they stand to restructure their revenue splits and allow indie devs to have a greater share? Probably, but given what Valve does with their split, I don't think it's necessary. Now, to lean into conspiracy theory just a little bit, I think that the fight here is really Epic Games trying to undermine their biggest competition. Um, I think Microsoft is on board as well because these two companies have a vested interest in harming the user experience on Steam. Valve, like I said, has accrued this good guy image. They have the favor of people who play games on Steam all the time. So many gamers have stated, like point blank, that they don't wanna buy games on other platforms. Why is that? Customers have chosen Steam over other alternatives, not because games are the same price on other platforms due to the MFN clause, Gamers have chosen to use Steam because it's the best place to play games on PC. I think Epic Games knows that even with like their own 30% revenue split, they wouldn't be capable of doing the same thing. And so they're trying to whip up people's discontent over 30% revenue splits. It's a nonsense argument in my book, and I really don't have any patience for it. I think the other issue that Epic and even Microsoft have with Valve is that they've created a culture of affordability. Gamers expect games on PC to cost less, significantly less, after a game has been released uh, on the market for a little while. And uh, I think that Epic really resents that, and Microsoft does too. They want to keep uh, the price of games uh, at $60 or more even, even after a game has been released for years. This is backed up by pretty much everything you can see on like the Xbox store. I don't know. I would love to know what you think about any of this. Do you think that uh, Valve has a monopoly over PC gaming? Do you think that Steam has unfair control over the uh, pricing of games on PC? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you enjoy the work that I'm doing here, if you believe in the videos that I'm making, you know what to do. You can like that smash button. You can get subscribed to stay up to date with all of the, my latest videos here. I'm trying to do three videos a week now as a minimum. So make sure that you check back here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to see what I've got going on. I think that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.